We have to step out to find out, right? Step out to find out. You got to step out to find out. What you found out? Stepping out can be very scary. Stepping out can be very scary. It's actually operating and walking and stepping out on faith is like working a muscle that you've never used before. Right. It's like working a muscle that you've never used before because you're weak in this area of just truly stepping out there. Like, honestly, you have to be willing to look like a fool when it comes to the things of God. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fruit Bearing Conversations. My name is Derek Mullen. I'm a filmmaker and producer of our most recent films, The Company You Keep, The Wake Up Call, (laughs) The Gift of Grace, and The New Husband for Christmas. Not in that order. (laughs) But just know that um, I'm the filmmaker behind those films and producer and the producer and host of Fruit Bearing Conversations. Yes, and I am Tyria. I am the writer and producer of all those films that he just named. And (laughs) I am also the... um, also co-founder of Fruit Bearing Studios and host of Fruit Bearing Conversations. Welcome. Hey, hey, hey. What's up? This is Trey. I am a host of Fruit Bearing Conversations, also <laughs> co-owner of all the films that Dirk has mentioned. And um, kind of go from there. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, we, you know, the question was asked. Derek, do we have to introduce ourselves every time we start a a new episode? I say yes, because it's going to be for those individuals who don't know who we are. So if you don't know, we're looking to to get to know us, (laughs) and we're hoping to get to know you, because you'll let us know in the comments. Absolutely. Welcome. So, uh, Karia, um, as we venture on this series that we're in right now of Beyond the Altar. Nope. Nope. Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. What what you want to So give give it to me again. We are on a four-part series right now, and the title is I Got Saved, Now What? All right, so... <laughs> Beyond the Altar was the first Beyond, episode. Beyond you got to go back to was, 105. Beyond the Altar was uh, episode 105, in case you missed it. So, um, <laughs> I Got Saved, and Now What? <laughs> <laughs> so, we are very prepared, guys, for this episode <laughs> 106. So. So, but I said all that to say, uh, can you go ahead and... Bring us into our next episode, but bring us into this episode for, for the next section of Fruit Bearing Conversations. Fruit Bearing Conversations. <laughs> well, let's kind of, you know, kind of take our jackets off and, you know, take our shoes off and kind of relax a little bit before we jump into, you know, the topic. How was y'all week? How was your week, Troy? What you been? Okay, wait, wait, wait. So we gonna if we're going to do that, then I'm going to start off with my birthday. <laughs> it was it was a very it was it was a it it was a, mem- a memorable it's something I won't forget. Yeah, absolutely. Like absolutely that. so. And um God is good. You I are now a lot of sitting golf. here. Yeah. You're sitting here 50 years old now, Derek. Half of 100. You're now. Thank you. <laughs> cheers. Look, cheers wait. To, come cheers on. to all the other 50 year olds out there. Oh, well, wait, no, because I'm not 50, so just kudos just to cheers, life. I said cheers to all the other 50 year olds out there. <laughs> you didn't cheers, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. No. So no. That's great. I'm. I'm definitely. Um. Excited and happy for you to, um, see fifty years. It's a blessing. Yeah. It, it. It was. It's even weird when you say it. Yeah. Fifty years. Like, yeah. geez. <laughs> how does it feel to be fifty? Is it different? Yeah, it's very different. You know how different it is? How different. His body aches. I have more aches in my body than I had last time. <laughs> no. And I'll be trying to figure out, like, oh, is this supposed to happen? That's the weird thing. So that's why I say, hey, I'm gonna just say this. It's just a PSA right now. Make sure you know your numbers. Get your health up. Get your oh health. Get God. your checkups. Oh Don't wait till you're fifty. I, I've no. I'm, I've been getting my checkups. So I want you guys to do know that. Yeah. I've got my colonoscopies. I did my PSAs. Um, that's that's for the prostate checking the prostate. If you don't know, it's SATs. Um, so uh, yeah. So I'm just saying, like you know, get get all that stuff checked, man. Again, we um, you know, your your health is your wealth. It's not. It's not. This is not about the money. It's your health is your wealth. Cause you can have wealth, but if you don't have health, you 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 you're you're your health poor. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. You can't enjoy it either. Yep. Yep. So. Yeah. All right. So hey. So it, that brings us into. <laughs> I got saved, and now what? 
<laughs> no, so episode 106, of course, is titled, How Do I Know When God Is Speaking? How Do I Know when God is speaking to me, right? So that's pretty much where this episode is going to go because that's really a, a subject that is real. You know, it's like, how do I know it's him? How do I know it's not just me thinking of this? Or how do I know it's not just, you know, a coincidence, right? But we do realize and know that once we turn our lives over to God and we say yes, that we don't believe in coincidences anymore. Correct, guys? No such thing as coincidences when we're yielded to the Holy Spirit, right? So... Right, right, right. <laughs> oh, you was waiting for us to feed you. Can you call feedback on that? I thought you were right. talking to them. I, I thought you were talking to y'all. I am, I am, right? So, y'all know I like, I like, right. Uh, right. <laughs> right. No, so honestly, okay, so we're going to just jump into four. Um, just highlight four different areas on how you know when God is speaking to you, right? And so those areas are um, basically uh, building a genuine relationship with God, first and foremost, right? We're going to jump into that as well. And then also simply asking him, asking what you want, asking a question and waiting for the answer, right? Or paying attention to the signs. That's the third one. Just paying attention to the signs, wonders, paying attention to the things around you that uh, he could be speaking through. And then uh, final one, number four, stepping out to find out. So that was pretty much what we're going to be highlighting today and the conversations we're going to get into. So how about I start it off today? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, all right. Absolutely. <laughs> so let's I like when you leave. Reiterate number one. Um, well, I would say um, kind of like we alluded to in one of the other podcasts, like being able to hear from God is not as hard as you think it is. Um, you really have to go back to the first time that God spoke to your heart mm -hmm. about salvation um, and just remember that voice when he calls you down. Like the Bible says, um, when I call, what is the scripture? I can't think of it. We said it. My heart, not your heart. No, when I... Um, when you hear my voice, hard not your heart. Yeah, when you hear my voice, hard not your heart. So it, it goes back. Yeah, that's it goes back to that one. So I just want to say that um, don't make it more difficult than it needs to be. Just kind of remember that still small voice that spoke to you. Really, I would say inside, inside of here, inside of your your innermost being, about. and just kind of just kind of take that and use that as a guidepost. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I would honestly say that um building a relationship with God is is so important, you know. Um basically, you know, anytime I remember an analogy I heard when they were saying it was a pa pastor or he said he had called a lot of parents on the stage, right? And he had, you know, all the children in the audience and then the parents was on the stage and, and the backs were turned and so he just started having different people call out mama right just yell the word mama 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 and every parent on this stage knew when it was their ch child um saying their name mama right why because they've spent time with that child they know that child's voice they have an experience with that child right and so you start to know the voice when you have a relationship, right? And I want to highlight Mark 1 and 35, and it says, even Jesus, <laughs> very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. So, right? Prayer is important. So having that alone time with God, making sure that we are building that relationship. And I know that in the beginning of my walk, I remember Joyce Meyer put out like a, um, what you call it? Like if, if some, a challenge, I would say a challenge or something, right? So she said, make spending time with God. And I've said this before, make spending time with God just as important as brushing your teeth, right? And I hope that's important, right? I hope brushing your teeth is, is very important. And so make spending time with him that serious, you know? And so that's pretty much how I got my start and really honing in and understanding that spending time with God goes beyond church on Sunday, right? I know in episode 105, we talked about that. We talked about the importance of going to church and then we talked about the importance of feeding your spirit. So on a daily basis, we should be in prayer. We should be talking, right? And I, and I mean, even if you have, I know a lot of people may say, well, I don't have time. I got to get up. I got kids. I'm trying to get to work. I'm trying to do this. So, um, 
in episode 105, we talked about choices, right? So we can choose to get up a little bit earlier. We can choose to maybe once we put the kids down at night or whatever, we kind of, you know, just go into some alone time. And what I want to also highlight is that you don't have to spend hours and go into this, you know, this special room and, you know, the, all those type of things that I think people kind of portray that you have to do. You can literally have five minutes sometimes and you spend that five minutes with God and it's the best five minutes of your life, you know, and it's the yeah. best five minutes of your day. So just making sure that we are um, dedicating that time so that we can build a genuine relationship with him and not only just talking to him, but also giving him an opportunity to speak back. I will let one of you guys um, go f- as well because I I can you know have no talk, I would, talk no talk. I was no the the thing is it, and with all that being said but we we go back to the question is how do you know mm-hmm. when you're hearing from God mm-hmm. um, I was asked that a couple times when the, on some of the decisions I made in my walk or even 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 on this career path you know you know how did I know that was God speaking to me mm-hmm. and I don't I don't I don't know it's like Trey said it's like it's a still small voice something that you feel. It's something that you feel. You know, something that you feel on the inside, and then not only and only you know that is when it's happening to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you know, and I think it's easy to move, and may it may seem like it's you making a decision mm-hmm. on certain things, mm-hmm. but then there's this moments that you know, like it's God, you know, ordering your steps, absolutely, in in some way, and even like you, you mentioned something earlier about knowing like the the what is it the small winks or the yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's like it's it's certain things that are like well, like how do you know how do you know if you if you even moving in the right direction? Sometimes you have that confirmation. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, you know, and so far, you know, we've gotten some feedback in regards to like even like our our faith based films that we're mm-hmm. watching, and that feedback even with comments mm-hmm. that people are chiming in. I, re- I remember when we um when we um put the wake up call on um YouTube mm-hmm. and it was but we and we put the, but we put it on YouTube right after we you know released a new husband for christmas mm-hmm. and during that time you know like as soon as we released as soon as that was the new husband for christmas released and then we then we put out the wake up call yeah. the wake up call took off like in th- less than 30 days it had over like 91 <laughs> views 91,000 uh, I'm sorry 91,000 <laughs> views yes yes please let me correct that yeah. 91k yeah um views and um and then the comments i mean so that even in itself was confirmation like oh okay yes mm-hmm. you know like this is what God is. This is God was preparing us for. And um, I remember sitting at the computer and I was probably writing the next script or something. And I was sitting there and I seen a, um, you know, when you're subscribed or YouTube or whatever. And I seen a pop up and it said, I saw like a comment or something that said, oh my God, this is like one of the best faith based movies I've ever seen. Right. So because I'm a faith based filmmaker and a writer, I want to check out, you know, I'm literally, I'm, I'm interested. I always support, you know, other faith-based um, writers and as well look at their movies and everything. So I'm going to see what movie they're talking about. <laughs> and that's when I found out it was the wake up call and it was going crazy. Like, I'm like, I'm calling you like, yeah, hey. I, I know. It's like, <laughs> it, I'm, I'm, when I say y'all this, it was wild. Like yeah. that, that's how I let you know. God will blow your mind for the little things yeah. that you think is so small. It becomes so big. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. and, um, so it's, it's it's another thing. So I, again, I, 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 it goes back to the question. Yeah, voice, so yeah. how do you know when you hear his voice? And I and that's why I think the very first one is you have to have a relationship. You have mm-hmm. to. That relationship is key because otherwise you would know. If I didn't know, if if I didn't know someone like I'm out in a store somewhere and it's a total stranger that comes up and talks to me or or yelling from a distance or whatever, but he's calling talking to me, but I don't know his voice. I'm not going to turn around. I don't know you talking to me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you, I don't have a relationship with that person, but when I have a relationship, I know you, I know your voice. I know what you're saying. So, and, and I think we're, you know, don't expect majority of people don't hear audibly right it's not that you're listening yeah, it's for not like, uh, you hear the uh, you hear loud thunderous voice Kyria, this is god speaking to you yes it's not it's not that honestly i cannot ever <laughs> i can't say that i've ever heard god's voice audibly right but i can say that i've heard god's voice audibly and i can explain god speaks through people Right. He can speak through different people. He speak through he just speak through he speak through a commercial. You know what I'm saying? So it's like 
it is him using an individual, right? So for instance, I'm a prime example. When I was literally in prayer and seeking and asking, um, which going to the second one, but when I was asking God, for direction for my life, for what gift has you given me? Because we've all been gifted, you know, by God, he's given every single person on earth a gift. It's, you know, we just got to tap into it and find out what that is, but we have to ask him. Right. And so when I started asking him, I, in that still small voice, I heard right. Again, I didn't understand at that time because I was so new. I was a baby in Christ or whatever. And so I thought I heard it, but I didn't know for sure, right? So I shared it with my husband. I shared it with my girlfriend. And I'm like, I think he's telling me to write. But at the time, I didn't know. But you know what? I was at church and my pastor taught a message. And he used an analogy about, if you know, if God is calling you to write and, you know, all these things. So guess what? I heard from God. It was a confirmation of him telling me to write, right? Mm -hmm. Even though you don't necessarily need a confirmation. When God said it, it, it settles it, right? But he can use different things in different situations to show you that you know because sometimes because sometimes you're unsure and sometimes you're, you're like okay did, I'm, I'm not sure if this if this is the move i need to make but yeah. then again like you say it's but through other people it's those yeah. confirmations yeah that hey this is the direction you should be going absolutely i mean i remember and i just want to bring this in so it's just like um i remember you told us that you know you said that um god told you that you're gonna move to alabama i was just gonna go there <laughs> yeah <laughs> She said, uh, I remember she said, God told me that I was going to move to Alabama. And I swear to y'all, you know, it, this, I, I'll take this all the way back to the to first time she told me that God told me, God told me to write. All right. So now it'll be like the same when she said, God told me to move to Alabama. So I was like, okay. <laughs> at this point. Here, here I am. Are you sure? But I mean, at, I mean, really at this point, I'm like, I, I believe you. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And then as, and I'll tell y'all as we, as, because even then is what was, was it three, four years before the move? Was it two yeah. or three years? It was four years. Four years before the move. And, but even during that time, it was like, it was little things. And when I tell y'all, like, little little winks, little messages, uh, inboxes, whatever, right? I mean, from from all the way from a young lady who reached out to you from Alabama. Oh, yeah. Um, all the way to... Renting cars watching, with watching, Alabama watching, license watching, plate. Wait, was watching a movie. Yeah, was watching a movie, and then you say, like, Alabama license plate. I don't know. Like, And I don't know if that's just, like, the thing where you say, yeah. well, I bought a car. As soon as you buy a car, and all of a sudden you see that same car on the road, but you and never let, seen let me, it before. Let me interrupt you. Go ahead. That's coincidences, right? People associate those things with coincidences, but not in Christ, right? So it's like, and no, we were... We rented a car, and when we were loading up the car, we closed the trunk, and the license plate said Alabama, right? This is after God had started showing us Alabama. And so the final straw, of course, I can sit here for days and tell you all the things that was happening, right. but the final straw, I literally, I pray because, of course, we wanted to go to Atlanta, right? That's where I yep. desired, Trey desired Texas, <laughs> right? But we wanted to go to Atlanta just so we can all be in the same city, you yes, know, and doing sure. different things or whatever. I was, saying, so, I was wondering about that, too. Yeah, so we got started. You remember we started? I started calling and asking for like uh, different areas in the city and all type of stuff, you know, because we were con really considering Atlanta. And so um, I prayed and I'm like, well, wait a minute. This is first. I said, we're making all these moves and we haven't even asked God. Right. Peter. Yes. And I, I love this saying that if you don't consult God, you insult, you insult God. Right. And so we had to consult God, like, God, we're making these plans, we're making these moves, and what do you feel? What do you think, right? And I'm telling you, the the Alabama was hitting us left and right, and we, Alabama, what in the world? What, who's in Alabama? Who want to go to Alabama? Like, God, are you sure, you know? Yeah. And so I remember the final um, point when I said, God, this is serious, and this is not a mistake that we can make. We need to know that this is you. What am I doing? I'm asking him, right? And I sought him and I said, please let me know if this is you. Hear my words. Please let me know if this is you. That very same day, I read Matthew chapter 28, right? Can't remember the exact verse. I need to get that. But that very uh, same day, I read it. It said, do not be afraid take courage it is i right there's no better confirmation than the word itself right after that i didn't need nothing else i knew it was him yeah. but the thing is what if i hadn't asked mm. 
we can be in Atlanta because here's the thing. God let us make our own choices. Mm -hmm. I could have went to Atlanta. Me and my husband could be in Atlanta right now. We could be doing great things. We, you know, you want to be here, <laughs> but but I'm saying <laughs> we could have been there. We could have went to Texas. We could have did whatever we wanted Texas to do. Too. Yeah, we could have did whatever we wanted to do, right? But he said Alabama. But I sought him and asked him, and that's why I'm saying we have to ask him. Ask and you will receive. Ask and you shall receive. Right? Yeah, That's Matthew 7, right? Matthew 7, 7 and 8. He's talking about asking and you shall receive because I think a lot of us in this life right now on this earth, I don't think that a lot of people will get to truly experience God in his fullness. And the reason I don't think that is because we don't really ask him things. You know, we're just going about living life, doing what we feel led to do or what our, what we want to do, right? Not even led, but just what we want to do. And so because it feels good and that's what we want to do and it's making all this money sometimes, this got to be God, <laughs> right? But if we never ask them, how do we know we're on the right path? Yeah, I think because uh, first of all, I think a lot of people's relationship with God is a, a genie in a bottle mentality. Oh my God, it's like a vending machine. Yeah, it's like, you know, um, I'm gonna, let, me, let me run my Bible. And see what God gonna crank out for me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think, and it's funny, I I feel some conversations that I hear with people when they talk about God. It's like, um, you know, by either by buying a new car or house, yeah. And, you know, we think those are, you know, God moves, but sometimes <laughs> it's not. You yeah. know, that's sometimes not, it's not. Sometimes it is. You, you know, know, but yeah, you know. But I'm saying, but I'm yeah. just saying, in some in some occasions, in the way the, the way it's celebrate or celebrated, yeah. yeah, it's just you know. Oh my God! Oh my God! Yes, you are right. Like God just bless them with that house and say, well, they, you know, may, sometimes it's a blessing. Sometimes that's just what their money was able to afford. You know, so it's like you got to know the difference of a blessing and just something you just did, right? It says that blessing adds no sorrow, right? Blessings adds no sorrow. So if I get this big thing or if I get this big house or if I get this fancy car, whatever it is, right? But it's taking away all of my time and my energy and everything I have to do. I have to work so hard now. I don't have any time to go to church. I don't have time to do because I'm trying to keep up with this lifestyle that I have created for myself, right? Is that a reconsider? Yeah. Is yeah. that a blessing? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, we have to know the difference. Yeah, yeah and but, I like this song that Corinne Hawthorne got out. She, it's say, uh, you can have everything, meaning monetarily stuff, you can have everything but still have nothing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. you can have everything monetarily but, like, you still empty on the inside. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. song, it's a real good song. Yes. But, I, like, but I was talking about that, like, just when I was talking about, again, let's, like, when we were talking about blessings and we were talking about the talents. You know, and and you know, when we when we think about what God blesses us with, and we talk about the the story, the parable of the talents. You know, because where one individual had five talents, the other one had two, mm -hmm. another had one. But remember, those individuals have received those talents from the master according to their abilities. Their abilities. So therefore, sometimes we want to get, we want to have more than what we can truly you know, handle. Mm -hmm. it you out. And yeah. So, so, so we, so we have to understand. That's why I said, but I think that's why I said what it mean. It really means something. We have the right relationship. Oh yeah. A lot of us are living, a lot of us are living, um, in the world's view yeah. of what life should be <laughs> instead of what the view of what God, what God, what, you know, what God has for, actually has for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, from a spirit, seeing things <clears throat> from a spiritual perspective, from a spiritual yeah. perspective. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, we yeah, don't so get it confused internet. either. Like it's not, it's not wrong to have stuff. Not at but all. But just like the cliche say, don't let stuff have you. Like exactly. you gotta put it in the right perspective. And like even like hearing from God, like sometimes you just can't be afraid to ask God for like certain things or certain signs. Like it always remind me of the story of uh Gideon where Gideon where God told him that he would uh, I'm kinda paraphrasing, but basically that he would be a leader. Mm -hmm. Or lead the people somewhere, but Gideon was like asking himself, "You talking about me?" Right. And he kept asking for signs, and God kept giving him signs to show it that yes, it is I that's speaking to yeah. you. So sometimes in those in those areas where you're feeling like down or or unsure, it's okay to ask God to bring confirmations. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. To get clarity, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. 
Let's get on that list. <laughs> um, after, so we are going to actually, after you ask, after we ask um, God, you know, whatever it is that we're asking for, right? And the majority of the time when we are asking is, you know, for clarity or something, when you're really asking, like, what's my next step? What's my next move, right? Now we have to start paying attention to the signs around us, right? And we kind of jumped ahead when we were talking about kind of like, you know, the license plates and speaking yeah. to the people and, you know, uh, speaking through your pastor or whoever it may be, it can be a child. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It can be a child that will literally say something to you and that blows your mind. Like we've had that experience a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got, little, we got a little niece. <laughs> Boy, she be saying some stuff. And yes. I remember when, um, yes, and she's two years old. Yeah, I remember when our nephew he was younger. Oh, he used too. to say some stuff that uh. You'd be like, man, where'd this boy get this stuff from? <laughs> so it's okay. Like God can use anybody. Mm -hmm. He can use a child, you know, and I know there's a scripture and I think Timothy or something that says something about, um, you know, not forsaking your age or, you know, not feeling like that you can't be used because of your age, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'll, I'll listen to a child in a minute. And sometimes I'd rather listen to a child sometimes. listen to an adult. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's just the honest to God truth. You know, we, we just pay attention to the signs and stop thinking it's a coincidence and stop thinking that it's just how you pronounce it? Algorithm. Ag algorithm. 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 Al algorithms. Sometimes, you know, they'll, you know, it may be something you see, you may be, you know, God is speaking to you or something, but someone may say, and this, this happened before, you know, well, do you think maybe it's your algorithm or, you know, maybe it's something like that. And it's like, we, our mind can start taking us to those things to maybe feeling like, well, maybe it's not you, God, or you start to question whether or not, are you real? are you saying this to me or is it the algorithm or is it, you know what I'm saying? It's just like you start getting confused because now you've shared some things with people that you feel like that God is sharing with you. And then from their perspective, they haven't really grown into their relationship. So now they start giving you advice from a natural perspective as things like that, or, you know, like you said, Maybe, you know, when you get a new car and now you start seeing all the different cars, you know what I'm saying? Like it can be those type of things. And so now you start to question whether or not God really said this to me. And so you don't move on it. Right. Because now the natural is starting to make more sense. Yeah. It makes more sense that maybe this is just a coincidence. It makes more sense because why would God tell me to do that if I don't really had that experience or I never really did nothing like that? So maybe that wasn't him. You know what I'm saying? And so mm -hmm. you start talking yourself out of what he told you to do because he said it to you. Yeah. And so a lot of people is not going to understand what he said to you because that's your mission and your purpose. And right. Yeah. And a lot of times God, he'll call you, he'll call you to a place where he needs you to create a lane either for mm. others or either to create a lane where, um, he can speak in a different way. Not yeah. saying he don't speak, but yeah. sometimes he'll use a, what do you say? He'll, uh, he can use fools to talk <laughs> yeah. to him. Like, yeah. gotta use a, yes. anything, a donkey, <laughs> a rock. If, if a God says bush. something, <laughs> right. if God <laughs> say he gonna do it, he can do it. And sometimes, like, in the world that we live in, God will use people that you least expect mm. to do something to do hmm. something great and major because God knows that that person is going to give me the glory out of it because they know that it's not in their own strength, but only by the strength of God that he has created this lane and created this wave. Hello. So well, sometimes you got to blaze the trail. That's right. Do something, do things that ain't never, do something that ain't never been done. Mm -hmm. Ain't that what Noah did? Yeah. They didn't know what rain was. They didn't know. They didn't even have a clue what that was. No one didn't even know what rain was. And they started building their ark. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, no, God said, build the ark. God said, it's going to rain. Noah, what? What but is the rain? Part, even with that, then they, but then they look at Noah as a drunk. Yeah. All right, so this, so this like, food got to be drunk. drunk. This early in the morning, you drunk. Even though some people do be, you know, they early in the morning. But it was, it's just those are the type of things, honestly. And there's so many examples in the Bible that we can look at. You know what I'm saying? Like when you get yeah. discouraged and, and not knowing, like, if God is using you in a certain area, it's so many areas in the Bible to where you feel like, what? You know what I like in life to be like? What if you if you if you have ever bought anything 
whether it be a car, a microwave, TV. Let's be honest. This yeah. this is life. This is how this is how life is. Yeah. See, the Bible is our instruction booklet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's our manual. Yeah. But just like a lot of people that's living in life now, you get a car. I guarantee how many times they, how many times have you opened up that 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 uh that manual to that car to see how the car moves to see exactly how the car works. Oh, right. That's 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 how we move in life. I would say ninety percent of people. Ninety percent. I'm saying that's how we move in life. That we rarely pick up the we rarely, wow. we rarely pick up that manual mm-hmm. until something happens to the car. That is exactly how we move with God. That until something happens that's in a negative light for me, I'm just like, God, I need you. Let me go ahead and open. Let me go ahead and read my Bible. So let me go ahead and ask: Is anybody out there shouting? If you shouting, drop yeah. in the comments. You need to be looking over here. You like looking? Don't be looking over there. You need to be looking over here. <laughs> is anybody out there shouting after that word? That was a word. Yeah. We don't open the manual. Yeah, we don't open the manual, and, and, I, and, and I'm, I'll be honest with you. When I when I when I'm telling you when I'm dropping these when I'm dropping these to y'all, I'm, I'm telling you that's how I look at. That's how we moving. But now it's time to correct. It's trying to. It's like a GPS. It's time to correct. Where we've been going, yes, it's like it's to really trying to listen to God and like, you make a U turn, like hey, it's time, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 at the roundabout, <laughs> turn around. <laughs> I said, make a U turn. Yeah. And then when you don't, hey, and then when you don't get it, it's like okay, I, I can imagine if 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 uh, who was it? Rerouting, 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 rerouting. Like, rerouting. Like, rerouting. <laughs> okay, like dang, okay. All right, at this night, this next light, make, <laughs> make a left. A yeah. So yeah. no, but no, but yeah, that's that's life. I really think that we until that's 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 how I see we how we move. We mm-hmm. we until we need until we can't well, we get the check engine light. Come on, <laughs> like dang, let me see what what does this mean? Yeah. And then, then you pick up then you pick up the manual and try to find out what it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then you were like, oh okay okay, and you start reading. Oh let me let me check the YouTube. And then you get it, it fixed. And then and then you rolling again and like thank you thank you God thanks for thanks for helping me out I holler at you next time I you again I holler you next time yeah you know so that's why I say we we gotta we gotta be we gotta be better stewards mm-hmm. um and we'll just or just be better in what God has called us you know for what He yeah. called and purposed purposed us for so that like I say that's why I say at the end of the day we get to a point where we're living for the world and not living for God yeah because when we start like again because you know when we start doing unto unto God mm-hmm. then other things will be granted to us yeah you yeah. know so seek ye first the kingdom seek ye first the kingdom and all these things all these things <laughs> shall be added unto you <laughs> shall be added so yeah. I, I mean I just I mean I, again we got we got the checkpoints so I mean hope y'all checking out the bullet points but you know drop it in the comments tell us what you think so far let us know what you you know what you what you're feeling what you're vibing with but Absolutely. do you get where we're going with this we're always talking about is hey how do I know when God is let's speaking? build a relationship with God and then we'll know how God is speaking to us yeah Carrie, I'm sorry no I was just saying I was you know helping you carry this sentence you know <laughs> <laughs> no but that's good though that's even just like um we put a scenario in one of the movies about like well, we made a scenario about like the GPS routing in the uh, movie. It's like yeah. you really sometimes you really have to look at God like that because like you could be going in like a certain direction and God will move you to go in a different direction. And mm-hmm. sometimes you can be going in a direction and you get off course. Yeah. And it's like God will always try to reroute you back to the original um, place that yeah. He wanted you to go. Mm-hmm. But like us as humans like we so hard hit it's like we just keep bumping our heads and trying to figure out a different route that we need to go when all along God is just saying like follow this route follow this route and it's like a lot of times we take a longer time getting to our destination because we keep on taking detours or we keep on rerouting going a different way that God's telling us not to go what was it what was the um story in the bible where they it took them uh 40 40 years. years For something that was supposed to take forty days. The children of Israel when he brought them up out of uh, Egypt. And and we look and sometimes I look at our lives like that, like something that was could have only taken us. I told you, man. Hey, <laughs> I'm fifty now, so I'm telling y'all. Hey, I'm I'm here though. I'm I'm I'm, I'm listening, God. I'm like I'm yeah. just you know trying to follow the path. And um, but uh, I was I was I thought about something else you said in in, uh, in a wake up call that was said about uh. Like the Holy Spirit is like gasoline to a car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can't break it down for the trade. Let's break that right there. You gotta, y'all gotta watch the Wake Up Call, man. Like yeah, yes. that was our first film, but I promise you, I, it's, it's I some love the nuggets in that film. But like he said, but you know, the the Holy Spirit is like gasoline to a car. Yes, mm-hmm. the yes. car. The car is still a car without gasoline. <laughs> 
<laughs> but when you put gasoline inside the car, it causes it to function. It causes it to function and move like it way it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. That's right. And that's what the Holy Spirit is to a Christian. <laughs> The Holy Spirit allows us to function the way that we were created to function. If you ain't got your gas, go to the gas station and get that Holy Spirit. That's all <laughs> yeah. I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> go ahead, Kyrie. No, but I was just going to um, highlight, you know, just paying attention to what God is saying is in Hebrews 2 and 1, it talks about we must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. So that's pretty much, you know, just the scripture that uh, ties into what we were saying, because we can't drift away. Easily. You should name this section just stay connected. Stay connected. <laughs> stay connected. But no, uh, <laughs> but no, nah, because when, when you do. That's when yeah. you get all the information. It's downloaded to you. Yeah, absolutely. But no, honestly, and then even after all of that, right, after you build that relationship, after you ask him, after you start paying attention to these signs and wonders and the different things that's happening in your life, and now you feel, I know for a fact that this is God, right? I just feel that this is God. What do you do with that? What do you do with all of that inspiration that you feel and that encouragement and not caring now anymore what people think or what they say or what if I fail or what if, you know, you have all of these emotions. So now what do I do when I'm at this point? And that draws us to our final one. And it's step out and find out. We have to step out to find out, right? Step out to find out. You got to step out to find out. What you found out? Stepping out can be very scary. Stepping out can be very scary. It's actually... Operating and walking and stepping out on faith is like working a muscle that you've never used before, right? It's like working a muscle that you've never used before because you're weak in this area of just truly stepping out there. Like, honestly, you have to be willing to look like a fool when it comes to the things of God. Mm-hmm. You got to be willing to look like a fool. That's crazy. You got to be look, willing to look crazy. And I'm just even <laughs> related back. Like, I remember I told one of my coworkers I was working. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing some stage plays. And she cracked up. I'm talking about <laughs> laugh so hard. But to this day, that's my girl, you know. But she know who I'm talking about. But she cracked up. And she was like, you going to be at the Fox? <laughs> but it was funny to her. Why? Because what you what you mean you gonna start right? Like girl, you you work here, you you know what I'm saying? But it's like it just don't make sense, right? It don't make sense for you to just step out and do something totally different than what you've been doing, or you know. So it's like not at this point you got to step out to find out. And in 2013, mm-hmm. I stepped out and I found out, you know. And so you you know you have yeah, your hurdles. That's what you said. 2013 is 2024. So yeah, eleven years. Eight years later. Yeah, yeah. You you have your hurdles. You have your doubts. You have your you know God. I don't know if if I really heard correctly from you. You have all of those moments because don't think that just because you step out that everything they just gonna you know it's the red carpet just gonna be laid out and now you just oh, finna no. walk you, you know and God you just finna just walk into your assignment and it's just like that no. <laughs> You know, so stepping out to find out, you going to find out now, you know, find out what you made of, find out that strength. That's why talking about that consistency and knowing the challenges, right, and understanding the challenges that will occur, but stay in the course, right? So you got to step yeah, out. Yeah, and you, and you, and I think sometimes it's like if, if God really showed you what it takes to get to, you know, the results that you're looking for, you would probably would want to do it. That'll scare you. It's scary. You'd be like, no, nah, I can't do that. And that's not exactly, that's not what you're asking me to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why I said it's just, you You do, you just have to, but you have to step out on faith. You have to step out on faith and um, and trust and trust. And when you trust him, you can trust and believe that it's going to work out for you. I mean, yeah. if I, if we really see, and, and I, I know during the course of you guys listening to us, you're going to hear our journey. But I mean, I know about even our journey as thus far. Yeah. But I, I know a lot of people who told us like, yeah, just so you know, you know, when you when you make your your, your faith based film and you put it out there for distribution, don't expect don't expect that much money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, but now I can and I'm and I, and us and, and I don't say this ever talk about the it's, but the response that we've been gotten have gotten so far is way beyond what we've been told. And it, but if we, but if we had went by what somebody else's experience was, yeah. And that's why you got you got to you, it's you can only go by your own experience. Yep. And that's why like you know when someone says um. 
you know, like like when we talk about how do you know, hey, you, you, I, I can't tell you. You have to, you'll know when you know. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. God, can I be explained? He have to be experienced. Yeah. <laughs> I That's love it. To. It, <laughs> it has to, you have to experience it for yourself. Don't let nobody tell you what it is. You have to experience it for yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, I can only share you what my experience is, but his experience th- with you might be different from mine. It's going to look different. It's, it's going to look, look a lot different. different. And you can't get, you can't be envious about that either. Like sometimes... Like with the way we is with the world and like social media and stuff, we just sometimes I think a lot of people think that just because you see somebody else with something that you're supposed Ooh. to have that. And I, that's that's far from the truth because <laughs> sometimes you you will get what somebody else have and a lot of times you won't because what they have is not meant for you and you got to be comfortable with what you don't receive when you think you're supposed to have something. That's a good point. Yeah, don't take the talent that God gave you and bury it in the ground. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. And don't take the talent that he gave somebody else and think that it belongs to you, you know? Yeah, so it's like... Mm -hmm. (laughs) So it's like... um, you know, even just going back to even just stepping out and finding out and stuff, it says that, you know, we walk by faith and not by sight because sometimes, because sometimes our sight will make us feel like we can't step out or it's not time to step out, right? So we let things like money, we let things like situations, we let things like obstacles and the different things that we're going through, we let those things deter us Mm -hmm. from stepping out, right? And so even what um, you were saying about social media, right? I think all of us have had those moments, right? I I know for a fact I've had my moments to where, you know... Seeing everybody else. Yeah, you know, you feel like, whoa! You know what I'm saying? Like, hello! Hello, God, you yeah, know? We've we been here. We've been, we been here. Like, what's up? Why why ain't yeah. we anybody, you know, shouting us out and nothing like yeah. that? Yeah, and it's, and that, that's a scary place to be, you yeah. know? It's a, it's a scary place to be because at that point, what are you doing it for, you know? Yeah. And so... Um, and it wasn't that it's just more of, you know, we know everybody know what, especially what we're doing and what a lot of, you know, it costs money to do things, right? It, it takes money. It's the and world so, that we live in. Yeah, it takes money. And so it's not, that's not, not a, uh, not, it costs money to make films. It costs money to do things. It costs money for us to be on this podcast it costs, right now. It costs money, it costs money to have a ch- the church doors open. <laughs> yeah. So you know, when, when they ask for giving and ties, you know, yeah. but all, all this stuff take money to keep it, to keep Absolutely. it moving. Absolutely. I don't get mad when y'all be going to the club, spending money on bottles yeah, and, and money's just a vehicle. Rest yeah, that's all it is. <laughs> right. Money's a vehicle, but y'all don't have no money tossing it up and um, giving it to the girls on the pole, but you know, hey. <laughs> nah. Everybody wants, everybody wants some money because this world requires money. That's just. Yeah, that's what it is. Don't make it more complicated complicated than it is it's not yeah and so what i was saying is basically you know you feel like that you know oh what i was saying you know you look at that you feel like okay god well you know you told us do this we trying to make these movies and you know so you do start comparing you know you do start questioning and like okay god well now now what do you start doing you start looking for uh just different opportunities just you know what i'm saying because it's like you're starting to get discouraged on the walk because it's not happening in your timing, right? I had to reiterate that. It's not happening in your timing. Sometimes, no matter what, it's going to happen in his timing. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, because I remember, um, I, I don't know, I remember as we got through, I think film number three or whatever, and we, you know, we was looking at some things like, man, <laughs> we might have to go back into the insurance business. And we did. <clears throat> And, yo, we, we actually did. We we, did, we I, went back. And some and some people mad at us right now, but no. <laughs> we <laughs> but, like no, we can't do. We yeah, gotta. No, we, when you think about it, when you build. Cause what, what so what happened is that no, we I mean we we literally I don't know we I don't, I don't know I don't know did we get a discouraging moment like you know it's like man this this thing not happened like you know fast yeah. as we wanted to right so <laughs> we was like hey let's let's you know let's go ahead and start back up doing insurance so we you know we you know put our license back out there. <laughs> We started recruiting again, and then then something just hit us to like like again. It did the voice? How do you know you're hearing from God? And God's like God telling us like, hey, that's not this this not the path. Oh my like, God. You gotta we, you gotta trust me. You gotta trust me. And so like we literally like hey. Yeah. Yeah. So we had just we just put it put a whole was put it we we put a full stop. <laughs> I mean, literally a full stop. We put a full stop. We started building the same and everything. I know. And we, we started a... building the same again. And for those that don't know, this you know just wondering about we that's how we met. We that's how uh, Derek and Trey uh, met. I mean, Trey and I met Derek through insurance, and so that's where we started. It. So that's why we saying we went back. So we went back. We um, 
like he said, got our license back going, got out there, started to try to build a team, and it just wasn't feeling right. It just yeah. wasn't the pat that God has for us. He's like, oh, what y'all doing? <laughs> What are y'all doing? It was temporary, and I, and I, and the thing is, I, I still love the the, the, the love insurance it. lifestyle to I this day, it. and I, I, insure, I did, and love educating about insurance, the young people about life insurance. But yeah. I realized that this is, but this is the purpose for which we were called for. Yeah, and uh, there's we, a difference. We met, we met through that. Yeah. Um, but here we are, and and you know, it's something too that you know that was a good point that you said that because of course even those around me and everything they know I have a passion to to teach about life insurance right that's a passion and a lot of people feel like that because you're passionate about something that has to be your purpose right and that's not true yeah just because you're passionate about it and i think that's how a lot of people teach it if if it's your passion it got to be your purpose well I had a it can truth. Be. Sometimes, sometimes it can, it can be. be exactly. Sometimes it definitely can be, uh, but and even if you don't know operating that, you know what I'm saying. You can you can start operating in that, and then once if if your true passion and your calling, or your heart desire is to please God and to truly be on the path that He has called you to, even walking in your uh, passion, if that's not the right road, He'll correct you because you've opened up your heart and you've opened up your ear gates to hear what he has to say so he'll correct you so if you feel like you want to start with that go ahead you know but i know writing and all that wasn't a passion at all of mine Mm -hmm. i wouldn't i didn't even decide i didn't think about writing anything this is a true calling that i had no idea even exists (laughs) you know what i'm saying so it's important that was i just wanted to definitely jump in on that yeah i think even when you talk about the passion part of it like i mean I don't, I, and I, I can't say that, it's funny, I can't say that, okay, oh, filmmaking is my passion. It's not, yeah. I don't think it's about, I don't think it's about the filmmaking. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the process. I think it's the, I think, I don't know, I think it's the building of that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about the creative side of it, you know, yeah. and what, what, what we're able to do with what we've been blessed to do. Yeah. That, yeah. I think that's the thing. Like, I don't Absolutely. know. Absolutely. I don't, yeah, because I couldn't, I, could, I mean, because even like, cause I, like I told you, yeah, I, if you, if you talked about life insurance right now, I mean, like we're doing now, I would go all in and, and, be, <laughs> right. and roll with you because <laughs> I bought into understanding how that changed and impacted yeah. lives. And I think that's the passion. Yeah. That yeah. what we do will change and impact lives. Yes. So that's the passion. Like so I love when people get a revelation right in the prison. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> that's revelation. Like it's 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 I'm I'm in love with in, impacting lives. Yeah. You know, um that's my passion. So I know through what I do, whether it be through photography, whether it be through um videography or filming, or even through this podcast, I know that in some way that what I'm doing is impacting someone else's life. That's dope. Because yeah, so. honestly, that was really a revelation right there. Yeah, because and, and, and to be honest, it's not it's not even about the money. Because yeah. what and and and, and man, but what, the impact in lives is not about money. Yeah, but that, and that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. that's what I'm saying. It's not this. It's not about the money. Like I'm I'm what I'm excited about is that I've, what I've always wanted at first. And so again, if I talk about my from a flesh aspect, yeah, I was chasing money. I wanted to be the millionaire and so on and so forth. But what I realized is that no, I, I want money to be the vehicle. Mm-hmm. And wish for me to deliver with the goods. Yes, that's all. Like so, I, hey, I, and, and matter of fact, when we talked about this, I said, hey, I said, Carrie. Right. So when we when we was in this group, I said, man, I, and I'm being honest, I said we can make forty to sixty thousand a year doing what we do. Because if I was working somewhere, I you know make yeah. that or a hundred thousand, whatever, right? Yeah. But if I'm able to just continue on making a living to do what I'm doing today, I'm cool. Like I'm comfortable right now. I love right. doing what we're doing right yeah. now. Yeah, absolutely. And so I want God all... to continue to make a way. That's why I say, yeah. God, please continue to make a way so we can keep, con- do- as long as we keep de- doing what you asked for me to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he will. Yeah. So, that's so I'm doing it for God. So, I mean, if you, Hey, so you're hearing it right here. <laughs> you're going to keep making a way so we can keep delivering on this, on these messages okay. for y'all. Dollar sign for Baron studios. <laughs> <laughs> cash, cash out. <laughs> In the, de- in the description. No, but I just want to say, even on that uh, stepping out piece, like, like I always say, God is not difficult. Like we make it difficult, even on like uh, that stepping out principle. Like I look at like, uh, thank all the military folks out there. But I even look yeah. at like a scenario where you have guys that's in the service and they've been trained for war, and like sometimes they have to go to war and they be up in the uh, sky in these big old planes and stuff and they have to jump out and it's like what would make you get to the edge of that plane looking down knowing that you're going to have to jump out and it's like in looking territory yeah yeah you seeing like 
what I got to do. In the danger zone. In the back of your mind, you know that you've been trained for this. You know that mm -hmm. it was going to come a time that I may have to go to war. It's like they train you for that in the military. And I think um, mm -hmm. a lot of the principles that they're instilling in those soldiers, they might they may not even realize it, but it's faith principles because mm -hmm. you walking by, faith. faith is walking by what you cannot see, but knowing some down, somehow down the future that may come, yeah. and that's 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 the principle of God walking by faith. And it's like yeah, it's when that time comes and you got to jump out that plane. When it's time to jump, you gonna jump because you know that it's something more at stake at the bottom than it is me sitting up here in this plane just not wanting to jump. It's yeah. like you got to take Stepping that out. leap. Stepping out. Yep. That's Man, right. you, hey, you better pipe down. You better get recruited. Somebody gonna, some, somebody from the military going to drop you a, a DM. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, we want you on our team. But no, hey, shout no, out. Good. But shout out to all the service men and women out yeah. there. I mean, even my brother was in the military. So shout out to you all who, again, my nephew, Casey. Nephew. who put your lives out there on the line to, you know, protect our country. And that's, mm -hmm. and that's, a, that's a real statement because my brother was telling, I remember when just sometime they, you know, a war that was going on and He's like, man, it's, he was telling me how, like, um, I think, like, when some um, uh, recruits came in and then there was a call for war and they were all, you know, afraid. They mm -hmm. didn't want to. And he had to remind them, hey, no, this is what you get trained for. This is what mm -hmm. you here. This is all the, the trade off when you said you wanted to come in and get yeah. to get to your college paid for and so on and yeah. so forth. This is the trade off now. Now yeah. you got to now you got to deliver on the goods. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, and that's what it is. God is like God is calling us. Now we got to deliver. On what he put, what he purposed us yeah. for. Yeah, that was really good. That was and really just think good. about that. Like when they have to go through that season, mm -hmm. that's a scary season. Mm -hmm. And that's the same way it is with God. It's like sometimes you walking with God, it's a scary, scary season, season. But it's like I gotta go through with it. Mm -hmm. What's whether the, uh, that be, I'm sorry, but whether that be, uh, I know right now we're talking about stepping out on faith. Like when we feel like that God is calling us to do something, you know. But stepping out on faith can even be. Knowing that you have to leave a situation, knowing that you have to leave a relationship, knowing that, the, you know what I'm saying? And so that's also stepping out on faith, you know, doing those type of things to where it'll hurt, but mm -hmm. it won't hurt you. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it'll hurt, but it won't hurt you. So it's like we got to have the faith um, to do what God is calling us to do, depending on the season that we're in. OK, yeah. when we just say yes to Christ yesterday <laughs> or just not saying yes to Christ <laughs> it's probably not time for you to start walking in your purpose yet yeah you know what I'm saying you got to build that character you got to go through training that was, that, was a, <laughs> right? that, was a, that was a good point you got to build that character yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to be and you got to allow him but how do you build it go back to episode 105 and listen to those things right so it's like you have to make sure that you are ready for the assignment right because God's assignment comes with a lot of different things, right? Whether those those things are positive, whether they be looked at as negative from a natural perspective, but you have to make sure that you're prepared and that your character is ready for that because you don't want to be on the forefront. You don't want to be in a position being used by God, but yet now you somewhere on the news because you didn't cuss somebody out or then beat somebody. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you just got to make sure that you are able to handle the people and the different attitudes and the, you know, the different things that may come against you because now, why now I'm on assignment. And so my character have to be in place. My attitude have to be in check. Um, I have to make sure now don't get me wrong. I'm not perfect. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is you have to make sure that you're able to carry certain loads. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and that's good. That's even like, um, as I think about what you was talking about, that's even like, that's even like when you look at scripture, when God is, um, like, even though Jesus was God in the flesh, like, I like how God put examples for the human in there because even though he was God in the flesh, it was a season that Christ did not manifest itself until a time frame mm. where he had to yeah. go through training. Like you'll look True. at it. You always saw Jesus in a temple, either teaching or getting taught until it was time for him to go out on his assignment. Mm -hmm. And once he went out on his assignment, he started bringing people 
behind him, which is his disciples that mm -hmm. helped spread the message that he was trying to get across. So you have to look at like you have to look like I always say, you have to look at the principles in the Bible. That's a principle. God had to go through a season where he had to get training. Mm -hmm. Same way with us. We had to go through a season where we have to get training. So you can't ever take the principles of God out of life because they always going to be there. Mm -hmm. Whether you living for God or not living for God, one way or another, you're going to be operating in on principles. That's right. And I even <laughs> said it. I remember <laughs> the part where his disciples and they were asking him, they was like, um, I can't remember what exactly what it was, but they were telling him whatever they told him to do or whatever he said, my time has not yet come, yeah. but your time is always here. Right. So basically you got to be ready for that time. Right. Jesus even had a time where he, I, it ain't my time yet. Right. And so we have to know that in our walks, it, it may not be that time. We got to make sure, you know, that we're in line with and walking with the season that God has us in. Man, mm -hmm. I, I mean, again, I, I, I I'm gonna start calling this Bible study. It's like, <laughs> so look, hey, look, as we here to bring this to a close, Kari, I want you to go ahead and recap the the points for today's episode. As we, you know, we get ready to bring it close. I know, we, I know, we've been on here, and I know, I'm just looking forward to now. I'm looking forward to the the uh, <laughs> the next week's uh, podcast. Two weeks. We we drop yeah, these yeah. podcasts every, every two, first and third Thursday. Every first and third Thursdays. Tune in. Uh, tune in. Yes, every first. But go ahead. Go ahead. Can you can you so, recap yes, for us? So basically, so right now, what you guys are uh, tuning into is a four part series that we are on right now, titled "I Got Saved Now What." Um, this is pretty much for those that are beginning their walks with Christ, um, those that are coming into. Um, the kingdom of God, even some, even those that have been in it for some time and you just need to revisit some things. Right. And so again, it's, I got saved now what, and tonight's um, podcast, we talked about how do I know when God is speaking and those points that we highlighted was having and building a genuine relationship with him. And we came from Mark one and 35 talking about that. And then of course we went on to making sure understanding it's okay to ask him just a simple ask God for direction, for clarity, whatever that may be. And so that is just asking him and that's coming from Matthew 7, 7 and 8. And then we talked about paying attention to the signs, the the um, messages that you're hearing or, you know, just the different things that you're experiencing in this season. That still small voice and that knowing that you know, paying attention to that. And of course, we came from Hebrews 2 and 1. And then we closed out with um, after you know all of these things and after you feel like I heard God and this is what I'm supposed to do, that final thing is stepping out to find out, okay? And that was 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. And just basically wrapping it up, just saying, God, do speak. Mm -hmm. But it's what frequency are we tuned into? I like it to an uh, example used before where it says, there's a radio station playing right now. This very second, there's a radio station playing somewhere, but do we hear it? But it's still playing, right? Mm -hmm. but we're not tuned in to the frequency, right? So make sure that we're tuned in to the frequency of God, how he's speaking, and pay attention from to his there, voice. Go from there. There it is. <laughs> Mic drop. And go check out our movies, y'all. Yeah. The company you keep, the gift of grace. A new husband for Christmas, the wake up call. Go check him out, and we got something real sweet in the works. Um, that's some brewing, got some brewing, got some brewing. brewing. <laughs> that we will be filming what early next year? Yeah, mm -hmm. early next year. We we got a story for y'all that we're that's excited about. Yeah, so yeah, thanks for tuning in with us. Make sure you tune into our movies, and we will close out. All right, we're gonna close out this evening. I'm gonna give a big plug to my uh pastor pastor remedy or um it's a quote that he say and i want to leave us with this god may not come oh, yeah. suddenly and he may not come expectedly but eventually he will come yes remember that eventually <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for this podcast. Father, we thank you for the listeners that tuned in. And Father, we just ask that we will be a vessel, Father, to just make your word simplicity, Father, so that people can run with the word, Father, that you have embedded in their hearts, Father. Father, you have used us, Father, for this season. For this season, We do not take it for granted, Father God, that each and every person, Father, that 
comes in contact with this podcast let them be blessed by father and let something that we say father be a seed father which will be dropped father to bear fruit for your kingdom so father we thank you father we give you all praise we give you all glory and all honor and as we leave amen Amen. And amen. And hey, I'm saying, I'm going to tell you, if you thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this word. Thank you for everything. If y'all are being blessed by these episodes, these podcasts, I'm telling you, make sure, you know, if you feel led to give, you feel led to, you know, um, just so into what we're doing, we will drop in the, um, on this show right now is our cash apps, Zelle, PayPal. There's many ways that you can give. So if you feel led, you are being blessed by this and you want to pour into what we are doing, feel free. Give, give, <laughs> give. <laughs> but do Love this. You all. <laughs> only give as you're led because there are only two times to give when you led. Led. What else? <laughs> when you love, when you love, when, when you love, love so. if God is not prompting you to do anything. Hey, we're not coercing you to do anything. Right. We're just saying, if God prompts you to do something, we greatly appreciate it. But if not, we still greatly appreciate and then, it. And then you're giving, just so you know, when you do that, that that helps us kind of keep this thing going. That keeps us. Um, producing films and coming up with ideas to keep feeding the body of christ so thank you all for watching thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you in 108 no 107 yeah, 107 <laughs> and we'll see you back in um july love ya treasure <laughs> so yeah, yeah so we do comedy too y'all we'll be here all week <laughs>